Here is my left side camera mount. You'll see that it's on a clamp that is somewhat curved. This camera mount has a somewhat curved set of teeth. It is attached to my mirror. This one has a slightly different but curved set of teeth as well. The jaws are wider on this mount. I like using different mounts in different places so I can compare their sturdiness and their grip. I have a flat jawed mount attached to my crash bar which is wrapped in rubber bicycle tape. It seems to be working just fine. Here's another view of the flat jawed mount clamped to my crash bar. It's just fine. It'll stay there until it comes loose, at which time I'll just tighten up the orange strap. That's what these orange straps are for. It's a backup system in case a mount comes loose. I have this curved jawed ball mount, threaded camera mount on my right mirror. On my left mirror, I have this clamp style threaded mount. So you can see that the mount on the left mirror is completely different from the right mirror. This configuration is considerably tougher than the ball mount configuration on my right mirror, but it has limitations on which way you can point the camera at certain times. So you may have to loosen the entire assembly and redirect it to get a good shot. Sometimes I'll mount one of the curved toothed mounts back here on the passenger bar. The flat one is terrible. terrible. The only way I could get the flat mount to stay here is to duct tape it to the bar, which is uh, a real pain in the butt. So yeah, I needed about a half an inch of tape. Uh, that was crazy. There's just so much tape, but it did stay for quite a long time, months actually. But again, it required a lot of tape. Here's another view of the flat jawed mount clamped to my crash bar. It's just fine. It'll stay there until it comes loose, at which time I'll just tighten up the orange strap. That's what these orange straps are for. It's a backup system in case a mount comes loose. These orange wired straps are quite amazing. They're from Home Depot. They're just, you know, a metal wire that is uh, coated in rubber and it has little protective tips on the end. They're really terrific. I'm storing my helmet mount right here. If I ever need my helmet mount, I will take this off, pop it out, just like that and I'll put this on my helmet, and then I can do swivel shots. These camera mounts are jump ready. In other words, I can leave the ground and take a hit with these camera mounts. That is absolutely amazing. Every one of these can take a pretty solid hit. Now that's not to say that they won't move. So the camera might you know, wind up losing its position, but I can always put it back. So that's amazing. My ram mount is on a U-clamp. You can see it right there, and that is really locked down. I don't like using U-clamps on handlebars because, you know, the handlebars are generally hollow, and the U-clamps are solid. So when you torque that down with a wrench, you can actually dent the handlebar and weaken it. And that's the last thing you want, because if you get into a serious crash, you could wind up snapping off your handlebar. And uh, well, um, I've actually had my gut punctured by a handlebar. So uh, it didn't go through my skin, it actually went through my belly bag. So several layers of uh, rubber and leather and uh, I could have died, but hey, you know, thankfully I was wearing that belly bag. So, there you go. 
My light switch, which is really just a hunk of plastic, is on a simple clamp. It doesn't need a lot of force. It stays put. And if I push it hard with my thumb, um, it won't move. So, you know, you want something to stay put in case you accidentally bump it a little hard with your hand. But you can see that that switch works just fine. Isn't that cool? I really like the blue. My camping bag is wired on to my passenger bars. The bag itself is also bungeed to the door for the fuel. I take a load of shaking all day long. And you know what? I've never had to worry about this thing coming loose. It is wonderful. I absolutely enjoy it. I think it's awesome. It stores all my rain gear because out here in Texas, mm, when a storm hits, you better be ready. You probably said to yourself, my God, he's on a street bike and he's flying through the air. Yes, I am. These stock foot pegs are absolute crap. You cannot stand on them without hurting your feet during a jump or on rough roads. So replace them with at least this kind of a foot peg, which is from a Grom or say one of the CB500s. Um, you can do aftermarket and that's fine, but you will find that people do experience problems with them, such as when they fall, they may not fold up quite properly and they'll bend. Uh, some will actually snap off. Be very careful about buying foot pegs on Amazon. They can be really cheap. I don't want to fly through the air and then come in for a hard landing and have my foot peg break off. That's a great way to break a foot. So don't do that. Use the stock pegs if you can. They're the strongest. Last but not least, um, I strap my center stand to this bar here. Um, the reason why it's strapped on is because it needs to move. So you can see that flexing there. That's really important because that center stand taps the dog bones underneath. As the swing arm moves, those dog bones will come in contact with this center stand. And that center stand needs to move when those dog bones make contact. If it doesn't, I'll wind up tearing up my suspension during a, you know, a small jump or something like that. I'm not going three feet in the air, but I'm, I'm getting off the ground. So you want to make sure that if you're flying through the air, that your center stand doesn't hit the ground or wind up breaking your dog bones. Here I have the center stand for the bike. Because I'm going to go trail riding, I want to make sure that that's tied up against the support for the rear foot peg. Here I have my orange wire tie. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it in a U shape, just like that. And then I'm going to take it and bend it a little bit like that at the top so that I can get it wrapped around the support here for the rear foot peg. I'm going to stick it in between the foot peg mount and the swing arm, drop it down, spread it open and get it across, squeeze it a little bit, pull it pretty snug, not too snug because you want it to move. Tie it up. <laughs> I bumped the camera. Tie it up. And just pull that around like that. So as I said, you want this to move. You want this to flex with the suspension. But you don't want it to suddenly drop should you hit anything. So make sure that that is up against there real nice and tight. You don't want this to catch on anything. Make sure that it flexes. You want it to move with your suspension, which is going to push against the center stand as you're riding. So this is going to vibrate and move. 
but you want it tight up against this so it doesn't suddenly fall when you make a jump. And this ends the video for my center stand tie. A great trail fix for a technical problem that just isn't easily solved. If you're going to do foot pegs, do highway pegs. And you can use hardware from a Harley Davidson and that's perfectly fine. You want the toughest thing possible. I just wanted something spiffy that wasn't going to rust. So I got Harley Davidson highway pegs. Live, live, live long and prosper.